Hello? Well, it's, it's definitely summer here in Uruguay, so I put on a, a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> and this shows you, you know, you can do Qigong, you don't need any special outfit for it, you don't need to have any kind of, of dress up, right? You can do it with, with sneakers and jeans and a Hawaiian shirt and look more like a, a tourist than a Qigong master, right? Um, but it, that, that doesn't matter. As long as you have liberty of movement, as long as there's nothing that's restraining you, you can go ahead and do it. So today I want to talk to you about a, um, a little detail, but it's a very important detail. It has to do with the meditation practice, the stillness meditation practice at the end. And it also has to do with checking your general posture. Stance and posture are very important in Qigong. So this is why you know, we have a whole video explaining the stance, right? That the, the legs should be looking forward, the knees are slightly bent, the back is solid and stable with the, the, there being a stable line in the spinal column. So your bottom isn't sticking out and neither is your belly sticking out, right? They're aligned and the body is relaxed, the shoulders are relaxed, there's space under the shoulders and here you are in the, in the Chan Mudra posture, in the meditation posture, right? The head is very slightly inclined forward but not very much so that the chin goes a little bit down. Right, but that's also to align the spinal column, and the eyes can be open, closed, or half open, which is the one that's kind of recommended for the for the meditative posture. So you neither get too distracted nor do you do kind of fall asleep or shut in. So you're in the the Chan posture. How do you do all this after you've done all of the level one exercise or any of the exercises that come later? It always ends in the stillness posture and you're told that at least for a few minutes to stand and practice the chi breathing and stillness meditation, right? Where you're still and focused on the chi breathing and the Dantian point and just allowing all the chi that you've cultivated in the former exercise to continue and process in its circulation. So when you're in this position, there's something very important to help keep you aligned, and it's called the plum rule. Now, the plum rule isn't a magic thing or something like that. It's actually just a kind of a way to do testing. But it, it comes from um, a, a workman's tool that was like a weight on a, on a string that allowed you to judge that uh, something was even, right? That, that it, it, it was to test upright structures. And... Um, in Chinese tradition, the plum rule is attributed with that kind of state of uprightness. So the plum rule in Qigong posture, in, in uh, Qigong meditation, is simply this, that you have from the tip of your nose to the base of your hands in the Chan posture, in the Chan mudra, um, you have a straight line. Right? And if you can sense that line, and you know that it should be aligned, that immediately lets you adjust. If you're too far ahead, if you're too far up, if you're too far behind, and it allows you to adjust your whole body. You adjust your hands, you adjust your back, everything to get to that invisible line of alignment. And then when you're in it, you can check it periodically to make sure you are, so that your back hasn't started to slump or something like that as you're holding the meditative posture. So that's really all that I was trying to show you today, but the plum rule is a very important tool to make sure that the practice of standing meditation as opposed to regular chi breathing, but that formal standing meditation at the end of the, the Yifa exercises can be comfortable and fruitful because it keeps you in the right stance and it makes everything perfect for chi cultivation and make sure your back isn't getting strained or your knees aren't too strained or uh, you're not out of alignment, right? So make sure to keep a, an eye on that. Try that out the next time you do the Yifa exercise to see if there is that alignment, that plum rule. If you make the plum rule, then you'll probably have some kind of a slight shifting until you're just right. And you'll see that that'll make it easier to keep the stance and more profound in terms of the cultivation. That's all for today. Yeah, I know, that's all for today. <laughs>